one thing was for sure. They both believe Sparks to be a total tool. Be an exciting contest which shows that divorced couples can still have fun together, right? Mythological hero Achilles. C. On the spot dice spin. We are experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. In the 70s, Chuck Barris was pretty much golden. Having come off the success of the Newlywed Game and the Dating Game in the 60s, he had the new Treasure Hunt and the surreal talent show of the Gong Show in the 70s, making him a really prolific producer, right up there with uh, Mark Goodson Bill Tom in terms of success rate. But then 1979 hit, and yeah, there's no defending this one. The Chuck Barris stages in Hollywood, California. It's threes a crowd. The game that determines who knows the husband best, his wife or his secretary. Now's our husband for today. Here's your host, the star of threes a crowd, Jim Peck. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you and welcome to Three's a Crowd. Three's a Crowd debuted in September in daily syndication was an unmitigated disaster of epic proportions. It pretty much killed the career of Jim Peck as a full-time game show host. And I have to be honest, I knew the format was bad, but upon further inspection of the show after doing the original write-up back in 2010, I didn't realize how big of a controversy the show even was. Not only was it generally hated by the critics and viewers alike, it was even protested by the United Auto Workers Union, the National Organization for Women, and a lot of conservative groups with a lot of pull according to John and Jane Q. Public. Hearing all of the backlash caused Bears to go into exile from television and the show being pulled in February of 1980. So Bears had to quickly come up with another show to fill the schedule. So what he did, he, he revived a classic 1960s ABC game show and gave it the Camp Bears treatment. What happened was a show that nobody asked for or even wanted in the first place. I present to you, Camouflage. Somewhere hidden right before your very eyes in this bonus picture, there's a trumpet. In just a few moments, one of these two contestants will earn the right to locate and trace the outline of that trumpet. And if they succeed, they'll win hundreds of dollars in cash and this beautiful brand new Cadillac Coupe de Ville! Yeah! From the Chuck Barris stages in Hollywood, California, it's Camouflage! Camouflage is a show that is all about finding hidden objects in a gigantic picture. Two contestants competed in this game in order to find the hidden object and play for a much harder puzzle for a Cadillac. No, I'm not kidding you. They were shoveling away $13,000 Cadillacs on a show of a set that looked like it cost 10 bucks. Now, since this is a revival, I will have to talk about the original. I'm kind of obligated to. The original 60s show was hosted by Don Morrow or Johnny Gilbert when Morrow was on vacation. The game started with the two contestants being shown the picture on their screens. If anybody could trace the object that was hidden right off the bat, they would win a big prize package. The game's question mechanic was a neat one. Morrow or Gilbert would pull out a statement from a hopper and the first contestant to buzz in true or false correctly would gain 10 points and have the opportunity to trace the object with some of the stuff camouflaging the object being removed. If wrong, then the opponents got the points and the opportunity to trace. Once the contestant got to 30 points, they actually got to see what the object looks like to make it easier for them to trace the object. The first person to trace the object won the game and a prize package and the opportunity to play on for even more prizes. The big selling point was the bonus game where the highest scoring contestant of the day was shown a picture with no camouflage removed. They could find the object they were asking for, they won a brand new car. The whole show was perfectly fine. Both Morrow and Gilbert did a good job and the idea of both contestants having to earn the removal of camouflage was a plus. Not only that, I liked the question stunt and was a good variant from the standard fare that we had in the past decade. I like the show for what it is. It's not brain breaking, but it was invented for its time and it's cheap fun. The show would be canceled in November of 1962. I don't know what replaced that. I couldn't find what replaced Camouflage. But then we get to February of 1980, and what happened with Camouflage that it was rushed a lot. For proof, when Three's a Crowd was on the air, it was a daily five a week show. Camouflage was a weekly strip, meaning once a week, kind of like Match Game PM. So, 
the networks had to shuffle up all their schedules just to fill the void that Threes of Crowd left and to fit camouflage in another time slot. N to be honest, that's the least of the show's problems. The problems lie in with everything else about the show, starting with this guy. And here's the host and star of the show, Tom Campbell. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Welcome to Camouflage. Let's meet our first two players right now. Johnny, who do we have? The host for the revival is Tom Campbell. Before hosting the show, he was a DJ based out of San Francisco. Barris had had success finding hosts for DJs out of San Fran, such as Jim Lang and Jeff Edwards. But Tom Campbell isn't even in the same galaxy as those two when it came to transitioning from DJ to game show host. Every negative trope they could find about game show hosts, he embodied during his stint on Camouflage. He came off as fake and forced as ever imagined, getting super excited about finding out what the dollar amount was for finding the picture in the front game, and adding so much fake drama when somebody's trying to trace the hidden object, or even answering a question that would be too easy for an Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader contestant. Here are some shining examples of Tom pretending to play host. Mix yellow and blue, and what have you got? Green. That's right. <laughs> he says, all right, $50 back to the picture. Do you want to try? Yes. She says yes. Come on. For $550. Okay, Barbara, correctly outlined that chipmunk, and you'll go for that brand new Cadillac. You'll walk away right now with $550. Come on. came into this show pretending to be a game show host. No, wait, strike that. He came to the show pretending to be pretending to be a game show host. It was that bad. Now we get to the format and it is a rushed version of the original. Instead of each contestant getting their own screen, both players use the same screen and colored pictures instead of the black and white ones. After the picture is shown and the object that is to be searched to be revealed, Tom reads the preschool difficulty question and the first test to buzz in with the correct answer wins $50 and can go for the puzzle with a layer of camouflage removed. If the test goes for the object and correctly trace it, then they win the money that the picture is worth in exchange for a brand new car worth about 100 times more than it costs to build the set. Now while the rules sound fine, the execution downright stinks. First of all, the pictures are in color and 9 times out of 10 the object is masked by the coloring of the camouflage, making it impossible to trace with just one question answered. Another problem is that in some instances, the object becomes plainly easy to trace after only two or three layers removed. So some games are either super easy or super hard. There is no happy middle ground here. Not only that, there is no consistency when it comes to showing the contestants what the object looks like. Sometimes they'll reveal the answer right off the bat, and in some instances, the object doesn't get revealed until two right answers in. Knowing what it looks like makes the hunt much easier, which is why the first game goes by fast, and the second and third games sometimes take a little longer. The bonus round is exactly like the original. Find the hidden object with no camouflage revealed and you win the car. The big problem is that some pictures are a lot easier than others. For example, here's one from early on in the run that wasn't solved. Then here's one from when they changed the format around with the object in plain sight. Oh yeah, I kind of forgot to tell you. They played Format Mambo midway through the run. Originally, the show was three games and three shots at the car. Later on, they changed the format to resemble a mini tournament of sorts where their first two players would play the front game and the winner got a bonus puzzle for an additional $1,000. That repeats with the second batch of contestants and the winners from the first two games play out for a chance at the car. Although I liked the format better, but the problem to the front game was that there was still no consistency. Speaking of inconsistencies in the first format, in some episodes, contestants could play on until defeated or until the show was over. 
Later on, the rules changed until until they won the car, was defeated, or until the show was over. It seemed to me like Bears or someone was tweaking with the format on the fly and it led to a lot of inconsistencies with the format and it really turned people off. As a matter of fact, thanks to Threes of Crowd, everybody got turned off to all of Bears programming. Camouflage really didn't have a chance to survive. As a matter of fact, all of Bears' programming would be cancelled by September of 1980. Even the highly rated Gong Show. But to be honest, even if Threes of Crowd didn't exist and Camouflage was on the air on its own right, it still would have flopped. Big time. Even if all the inconsistencies were straightened out, then it could have survived. But the decision of it going once a week where the syndication record was going daily five a week shows, and the stigma he gained with Threes of Crowd killed any chance it could have had. Adding a lame host, really cheap set, and you have the recipe for disaster. Not only did Camouflage get canned, as I said prior, every single Bears show got canceled, marking the first time Bears would have a show on the air since his company's inception in 1966. And looking back at it now, it makes you hate Threes of Crowd all the more. Man, it just goes to show you how one truly terrible show can torpedo your company. Bye-bye! You!